Uh, so we've we've covered glaucoma. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, what is and what causes cataracts? Cataracts. Cataracts is a, a nice analogy um, of a camera, right? The eye is really just a camera if you think about it. Uh, some some anatomy um, basics, really. If you think of the eyeball, the the cornea is the front of the eye. It's almost uh, uh, well the front lens of the camera. The back of the eye is the retina. That's the film of the camera or the sensor of your digital camera. There's the optic nerve that leaves the eye and, and plugs into the brain, right? The eyes are an extension of the brain, essentially. Uh, the optic nerve is the cable that plugs it into your computer so you can download the images, right? And in the middle of the eyeball is the lens, called the crystalline lens, uh, and that obviously focuses the light that we're seeing right now onto the retina, onto the film or the sensor of the camera. So that lens, when we're born, is crystal clear, um, and a cataract is a term for that same lens that you had when you were two years old now has become cloudy and is no longer clear. And so you say, why does it become cloudy? Why doesn't it just stay clear the whole time? The reason is, is I think, uh, complicated but also fascinating is that lots of tissues in the eye do not have blood vessels. It's some of the only tissues in your body that don't have blood vessels, right? And if you think about it, you can't have blood vessels in your in your cornea or your lens because then you wouldn't be able to see through. Blood vessels are not opaque. So those tissues in the eye need a way to get oxygen uh, uh, differently than you would typically with blood vessels. And the way the lens does it is it's retained so tightly in uh, its shell that it's um, it doesn't need the oxygen supply that the other tissues typically do, typically does. One of the things that blood supply does to all of our tissues is regenerate. It gets rid of free radicals, starts to clear out damage. And if you think about it, when we're going to the beach or even if we're outside on a sunny day, we're looking around, what's coming into our eyes? Sunlight, UV light, right? And that UV light is traveling through our cornea, the front part of the eye, through the lens, into the retina, the, uh, the sensor of the camera all day, every day, right? And especially if you're outside, if you have a job that's outside, or you have a, a life that, that takes you outside, your lens in the eye is accumulating a lot more UV light damage than someone else. And you as an 82 year old have a heck of a lot more UV light exposure than you as a two year old. So eventually that lens uh, that's inside your eye is gonna accumulate so much UV light energy that the clear fibers that are in the, the lens become cloudy. They become damaged almost. Once that happens, there's no going back. There's no way to undo that damage. So back in the day, we just um, dealt with that. People would slowly lose vision. And you can, you can look in some people's eyes and see the cloudiness. And you look in the pupil, the black part mm -hmm. of the eye, and it looks cloudy, mm -hmm. right? Um, that is a cataract. And you're able to see that because the light is reflecting in a certain way and it's kind of like illuminating the pupil and you can see that cloudiness. In a, in a child, it's black simply because the lens is clear and all you're seeing is the mm, darkness of inside the eye. So that's a cataract. And then you ask me, and then the patient asks me, well, what do I do about it? Typically, we do nothing. The cataract is not necessarily binary. You don't wake up one day and then boom, you have a cataract. It's kind of like uh, sun damage to your skin or something like that. It's a gradual buildup. And we'll look in someone's eye and we'll, we'll see that it's not perfectly crystal clear anymore, right? But what's the difference between perfectly crystal clear and then just slightly opaque or slightly, slightly, slightly more opaque? Eventually, we, we have a scale uh, that we usually go zero through four about grading the opacity of someone's lens and four being the worst, like the worst cataract you've ever seen. Every time you come in, just like we talked about with glaucoma, you come in and we'll write down what your pressure is and we'll write down what your optic nerve is. We'll also write down what your lens looks like and we'll grade it from a zero through four system. Eventually, it'll get to a certain number where we have to start thinking, I wonder if Paul is starting to have vision problems because of this cataract. And so we'll look at what your, your vision is. And, and typically, when, when someone has cataracts, their prescription will start to change. 
It's called second sight. And typically people, uh, you go through, and we'll talk about this, I think, in, when we talk about glasses and refractive air, but you go through certain patterns in your life where your prescription stays the same and then it gets a little worse and it stays the same and it gets a little worse. A lot of times someone who is, say, farsighted, they'll get more and more farsighted through their 30s and 40s and 50s. And then something like something called second sight will happen. And because of their cataract, they'll start to go a little bit nearsighted or in the nearsighted direction. And what started as a person who was farsighted, now he's getting a cataract and his, his glasses prescription will change uh, in so much a way that it gets closer to zero. And it's almost like he paradoxically sees better because his cataract is, is changing. But what's, what's changing there is his glasses prescription and not the quality of his vision. So if you think about it, if you think about what someone with a, a cataract sees, the blurry vision that a cataract uh, yields versus the blurry vision that nearsightedness or farsightedness yields, it's a different uh, quality, right? If you took off your glasses, if I take off my contacts, the world would be blurry. And I think we all know what that blurry vision looks like if you take your camera and just uh, tweak the focus knob, right? But if someone has cataracts, it's, it's a different type of blurry vision. And it's almost like looking through something, right? Not looking through a blur, but looking through a film. People always talk about cataracts being a cloud over your vision or a film or a veil over your vision. Because what's happening is you're, you're losing your contrast sensitivity. And everything just becomes a little whiter, right? A little grayer, like you're looking through that film. And if you think about it, like when you saw that cataract in that person's pupil, you're seeing that grayness that they're seeing looking out. And not only does the cataract blur your vision, but it also washes out things like colors, contrast, sensitivity. And so patients with, with cataracts will, will come to me and say, Doc, I'm having a hard time seeing, but you know who doesn't come to an eye doctor saying they're having a hard time seeing? You still have to mm, tease out what's going on. And so you say, well, tell me more exactly Exactly how are you having a hard time seeing? Is this at night? Is this during the day? Is it all the time? Normally I can drive, everything's fine, but at night it kills me. Or, you know, I just came from clinic uh, and, and this, this patient today said, I can drive during the day, but at night they have these new headlights, these European model cars with the bright headlights and it's driving me crazy, uh, I can't see. A lot of us are bothered by uh, headlights, especially if someone has their high beams on, of course. But a person with cataracts is so much more uniquely sensitive to, to this glare or this light scatter phenomenon, especially in a, in a high beam headlight or any kind of headlight, frankly, because they're getting so much more scatter in their lens. In that two-year-old lens, say a headlights are, are, are hitting the eye and they're penetrating through that lens almost perfectly. And there's no scatter or diffusion or diffraction in that light when it's hitting the two-year-old's lens. But when it's hitting that 82-year-old lens, it's gray, right? And there's so much more water and um, just imperfections in that lens that the light, instead of going through like a laser, it's hitting those imperfections and scattering. And the patient has a hard time seeing because instead of the light being a pinpoint effect about what exactly where it's supposed to be, is scattered everywhere, and it's really hard to, to cut through that. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? No, it's, it's, yeah, there's a lot more stuff in there for light to bounce off of. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So they'll manifest that as um, glare and having a hard time seeing, and it's a, it is a significant concern for society, frankly, uh, in that patients with, with cataracts uh, obviously have a hard time seeing, but then they also have a hard time navigating their surroundings, right, in driving. And now if, now we're talking about um, not just a problem for this patient, say, reading or watching the TV, but also getting around, right? And when you lose your sense of confidence driving, um, that really starts to snowball into lots of parts of your life. So cataract surgery is something that I think... Uh, and, and I know, and I've seen it in so many patients, can really change people's lives. And you can have cataract surgery and still uh, have some problems with glare and light sensitivity at night, but it's almost always so much better uh, in those type of complaints once a patient has cataract surgery. 
Hey folks, connecting with your benefits is our primary mission, and the SITREP is providing more options than ever. Subscribe to our free email newsletter, subscribe to our audio podcast channel, or subscribe to our content on YouTube. For details and links, check out the description below.